You should not let your other half, friends, family have access to your auction accounts where they can bid on things. I don't remember spending £800 on a Ford C-Max in dog poo brown. It was a taxi. Macaulay came in and said it drives weird, it doesn't feel safe. Well, how'd you get it to start? Oh. Is that an egg? It is rank. There should be like bushes in there. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing better than I am. Today will probably serve as a cautionary tale on why you should not let your other half, friends, family, etc., have access to your auction accounts where they can bid on things. Some of you may have seen previous videos before where my other half, Sophie, bought some absolute dogs. So she asked me the other day, I think last week sometime, could she buy some uh, cars for the farm where she sells a few, earns a bit of pocket money, good pocket money I might add because she'd kind of run out of cars down there I guess we hadn't had that many part exchanges or she sold them etc etc and I said yeah that's fine but please just don't buy any rubbish we're busy I'm not fixing up cars for you I'm not valeting cars or whatever if they're you know problematic so that's fine don't worry I'll look I'll get good stuff and I forgot about it until uh, I looked at my purchase history the next morning and was greeted by I don't remember spending 800 pounds on a Ford C-Max in dog poo brown. And it dawned on me that obviously Sophie had been bidding and she'd bought something pretty horrendous, I think. Um, and kind of all the joy for life just drained out of my body. Anyway, I just thought it'd be interesting. I don't really want to do too many videos on the cheap crap cars and whatever, because we're getting really nice cars in at the moment. And I'm kind of really excited about that and building up the quality and value of our stock. But I just thought, I just need to, I need to, I need to talk to someone. I need to share this with someone to share in my anguish and pain that we're buying nice Range Rovers. We've got RS4s and all that sort of stuff coming into stock. Sophie still insists on buying pieces of poo that are riddled with problems. Shall we have a look what she's bought? So I've now paid for this and Macaulay is on his way to collect it. So we will get to see this later. It is a Ford C-Max 1.6 TDCI probably one of their more problematic engines. It's on a 2013 plate. It's a grade four uh, and she bid 800 pounds plus fees. So the total amount that we would have paid for this vehicle is 1,030 pounds and 96 pence. That includes 208 pounds of buyer's premium and 12 pound 96 of an essential check, which I, I guess in her mind made her think that this would be okay. Let's have a look at the essential check first. All green ticks. So. She's a minter. Let's have a look what we've got. It's on 156,196 miles. It's had five owners. As we said, it's a grade four. The cap clean price for this was 1,575 pounds. It's brown, it's manual. It has got two keys. The logbook is present. Uh, it was a taxi slash private hire vehicle, which probably explains the mileage. Uh, it's got one service record last service, which the only service was at 117,000 miles. So approximately what, like 30, 40,000 miles ago, which is good, reassuring. Has got an MOT until the 19th of March next year, which this is the problem you see. Sophie sees these cars. Oh, it's got a green report and it's got MOT for a long time. It's, you know, it must be all okay and it's ready to go. But I think mechanically this car might be okay other than the mileage, which isn't desirable, but let's have a look at what it is. Doesn't look too bad in this picture here. Um, or that one outside, not looking too bad so far. Has got a tow bar. Boot is grubby, but not too bad. We're missing the parcel shelf and we've got some rubber mats that are just put in there. Back seats look very grubby indeed. Front seats look like how do you even describe it? It looks like a farmer has been using it to, I don't know, carry dirt and then wet himself. There are all kinds of disgusting marks on this thing. Dashboard and everything seems in reasonable condition, but oh my God, look at the state of the seats. That is horrendous. And what I can't decide yet is whether, because this is brown, the handles that have broken off the kind of plastic mechanisms that surround the seat and everything. Um, 
is that brown to match the paint or is it just rust? I've got a feeling it's rust because a lot of other things look quite rusty in there, including the handbrake up here. I got a feeling this thing is just, I mean, you wouldn't be surprised that it would stink anyway, but I got a feeling it's gonna be really, really damp and just horrid. Um, yeah, here you can see more of the whole seat thing having snapped off, just looks ridiculous. The, you know, if you want to adjust your seat, you gotta do it with this piece of hepatitis slash, what do you get from rust? Tetanus, tetanus and hepatitis special here. Uh, and just look at the state of the carpet, it's just matted in grime, and I'm pretty sure that looks rusty under there as well. Back seats, equally as disgusting. It looks like someone's got like a black light and they've gone around a hotel room or something. It looks horrendous. I think that's mold on the floor, which will probably be part of the reason why it's all kind of like rusty inside. Um, something weird's happened. Oh, the boot handle thing's missing from the boot, and the boot looks like it's been damaged on something. Bumper corner hanging off. Uh, they're showing us this door, I guess, because it's probably been painted badly. But it's hard to see from here. Same with that door. It's a dent. Some scratches. Uh, more scratches around the boot, and obviously it's got a tow bar. Uh, the paint is crazing on the back, so that's probably all been painted. Probably half the car's been repainted. The bumper doesn't fit properly, and it looks like it's probably been repainted. Ah, there's a break on the light, not the end of the world on something like this. The emergency like key ignition thing is missing its cover. That all looks broken and knackered. And I think this is gonna be a car that's got, you know, like remote locking, unlocking, remote start, keyless start, that's what I'm trying to say. But this section here is all broken. So probably tells us that at some point the key ran out of battery and they've broken that off in order to put the key in to manually start it. Handbrake looks like it's got athlete's foot. It's flaking off horrendously. They just, they really want to show us this rusty handle again. Definitely looks like rust. The other one's got, how's it got a hole punctured in there? God knows. Uh, more scratches. And there we are, back to the beginning. So, a wonderful machine. Um, I think the retail on this is probably, at best, Two and a half thousand pounds? I don't know what the hell she was thinking. Should we do a vehicle score on this? And uh, try and remember the registration. SG13. GYP. I don't think this is gonna score very well. It gives you a score from one to 999 based on your car's age, mileage, MIT history, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I got a feeling this one's not going to be very good, but I'd like to have a look at the MOT history anyway. 356 out of 999, which is below average. 11 years old, last recorded mileage 154,000. MIT comments, it says we're good. So, we'll scroll down and have a look. I notice they've got a whole new look on the vehicle score website now, which is quite nice. So looking good, average yearly mileage is good. Bad bits, low MOT pass rate, over two failed comments on recent MOTs in the vehicles over 10 years old. So, so, you know, we've got 287 days of MOT left. The mileage tracker looks good. It's always going up or at least stayed the same between years. So it doesn't look like it's dipped down and been clocked. Let's have a look at the performance of this thing. 0 to 60 in 11.3 seconds. Top speed of 100, uh, no, top speed of, yeah, top speed of 114 miles per hour and a brake horsepower of 114. Good news for this being what it is, it is only 35 pounds a year road tax. So MT history, let's have a look what these failures were. Light and track rod end, not the end of the world. Reversing lamp, offside track rod end. Not major stuff, to be honest, but still. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. Now, if you were buying this car, and you, if you were that mad, if you were as daft as my other half, it would pay to use one of vehicle scores history checks that do a deep dive into the car's history to make sure that you're not missing out on some important information that you might want to know before you hand over your hard-earned cash, especially as it's going to affect the price. So you've got the salvage report, you've got the ultimate report, and the ultimate report plus. The ultimate report plus is the one I recommend, and it covers you with £10,000 worth of data guarantee as well. So if there's anything that doesn't show up on that report that you later find out, you've got £10,000 worth of cover anyway. And if you use my code shifting metal 20 you'll get 20% off making it under 10 quid anyway. So... Yeah, I can't say any of it 
seems great. I'm, I've told her I'm not getting involved with this. I'm not cleaning it. I'm not letting anyone here clean it. If it's got clonks and noises and whatever, we're not fixing it. She's got herself into this problem. She's going to have to get herself out. We might even see if we can get her comments on this at some point. So, yeah, we sent Macaulay off to go and get it picked up. I'm probably going to get fees on it now as well because I've forgotten about it for about five days. You meant to pay in two or three. Um, I just tried to blank it out my mind. So, um, yeah, we'll get it picked up. We'll join you when it arrives and we'll have an in-depth look around with Toby's high-tech camera rather than their crappy ones. We'll see you then. Right then. Uh... It doesn't look bodywork too bad on the outside, but I have noticed, well, first thing Macaulay came in and said it drives weird, it doesn't feel safe, uh, which doesn't shock me, but they have written on the windscreen, cambered rear wheels. And if you look down the sides, that one definitely has got some, I don't know if it's positive or negative camber or what, but this side's even worse and it just does not look safe. It, uh, has someone deliberately done that or has just, I don't know, has a spring snapped or something? I can't see a damn thing. Um, oh, that's not meant to rock about like that. <sighs> see, I don't want to do any mechanical work because you have like, oh, but you've got a garage. It's like, yeah, I know, but our garage is busy. We don't want to do it. Oh, well, where am I going to go? So this one's doing the same thing, so is, I don't know, I don't know anything about mechanics, as you know. Is, is a bar broken? Is something's broken? Anyway, dodgy rear wheels aside and the back end aside, the rest of it looks all right, but yeah, there's some, I mean, for what it was, for a thousand pounds, not the end of the world, definitely is a new number plate. Looks like someone's deliberately scratched that out, which is weird. Um, yeah. I've seen a lot rougher cars on the outside, but obviously Macaulay said there was a gift for me in the inside there, and I've just spotted it. That's gonna be right up my street. So we'll check that in a minute. Um, yeah, front bumper thing hanging off. Maybe that'll just... Hey! Oh, no, I broke it again. I don't think that part of the bumper should move that easily either. But obviously the real concern with this was the inside. So let's have a look. I'll level with you. It doesn't smell as bad as I expected it to. It is pretty grim, but I expected it to smell really damp, but it doesn't really. It just smells grubby. Yeah, it just smells like a grotty house, to be honest. A bit of, yeah, a mix of like smoke, diesel. There's a he proper hefty cigarette burn there. Um, these seats are rank. Oh, it smells really doggy in the back as well. So obviously had dogs in the boot. Oh, boot doesn't open unless, so the boot button's broken as well. Oh, what's going on here? It's really weird. It looks like they've painted like a wood effect on. You know, sometimes people paint cabinets to have like a wood effect. They've obviously... Ah! This was a silver boot. So someone smashed up the back. And they probably put a silver bumper and rear door on that. And someone's very poorly. That's why it's all breaking through here. That's the primer you can see underneath there. Painted it. I mean, if it was a DIY home job, not badly, but if it's a professional job, very badly. And then they must have not done this bit and they're like, ah, oh, just get the brush out, Dave. And just brush it on there. So that's what they've done there. Oh, it's your lucky day, Toby. Here you are. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Is that an egg? It looks, oh, it's a stone. It looks like a deflated egg. Yeah, little Malteser bunny for you. A load of nails. 
seashells. Oh, my favorite. Refresher bar. Um, yeah, it's quite wet in there as well. Oh my God, look at the state of this for a bloody spare wheel. That's gonna help you out in an emergency, isn't it? Ah, well, it tells us a lot, doesn't it, about the previous owners, really. Oh, yes. That could be a dead rodent. I mean, it's a, oh no, that's a McDonald's thing. I thought it was a bit of toilet paper, but it's not. Why won't this come forward then? It seems like it should, but... <clears throat> we buy gold. They've obviously sold some, because there's packets there. Oh, look at the rot on that lolly stick. Talking of gold, should we go around to the front and I'll show you the thing Macaulay was on about? Something that tells me it's not real gold. They wouldn't have left that in. Oh, it's got diamonds on it. Real ones, I'd imagine. So, what's it going to be? A necklace? Surely not. <laughs> for a dog maybe yeah well i'll give it to sophie she'll like that little treat for having bought such a lovely car why did i sit in here i've just realized why did i sit in here i don't need to i mean we probably should take it for a drive but got a wheel nut down here it's reassuring which of the wheels is missing it then they all seem to have them so it's just a spare uh Lily. God, that's mummy, apparently. She, she looks terrifying. Um, we've got two keys. We've got some pens. <sighs> that is rank. There's seven pence in there. Uh, we've obviously got a very expensive gold chain. Do you know what, actually though, I mean, it is grim as hell, but, uh, I think, you know, hand car wash can sort this out. Probably cost you 70 quid, but that'll be her learning her lesson, won't it? We're not spending all day wet vacking it. Let's see if we can get this seat up. As far as I'm aware, they should just tip, but I don't know if they're just rusty. <clears throat> right. Strongbow. Awesome. We can't really drive it, can we? It would have been funny just for a laugh, but it wouldn't be funny if it crashes and we kill someone. Um, well, not, not for them, but for us, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get a chance to get this on the ramp because we're going to have to, because I was just going to sit down the farm and just be the bane of my life because your wheel shouldn't knock from side to side like that. So. Guess we'll do that next, see if we can get it in the workshop. Joy of joys. So, obviously our wheels are cambered in like this. That's gonna have a look, I'm checking everything. If you watch this wheel now, and we, obviously there's loads of play in it, and it seems to be like straightened out, sort of in the camera a little bit. So what do you think it wants? Lower and upper arms and probably a whole subframe. Got those arms replacing when it comes apart. Is there any way to find out? They've gone. They've gone. I think it probably had a dodgy MOT because if we look up through, I look at these, there should be like bushes in there. Like, absolutely knackered. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, it also wouldn't start apparently, that's why the cover was off the thing, so you have to put the key right in to get it to start. And it had no power steering then, but it is, I think, electric power steering, so I guess maybe once it's started again. It's not what you feel like for example, is it? Oh. How am I going to drain all that one out? Yeah, I think you will kind of into like uh the problem is when you start taking it apart, you know? When you see bolts and rust and then the bolts sees in the bushes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah the point is we don't want to do it. 
okay. so we wouldn't have bought something like this. Can you phone up and ask him for whatever it is we need? So. Yeah, I just get the same panel and see if it's the same size. Cool. Can I leave you to do that? Yeah. But, I mean, it could probably come out in the meantime. Do you want me to come and put the rest of in and give you a list? Can do. Yeah, and I don't want to fix anything else in there. So, you might want to get the power steering working and fucking... Yeah. But, yeah, it was working, so I think maybe if it starts again, it's going to be alright. Or why the, why the key thing's missing? Yeah, well, yeah, it's obviously because, no. for whatever reason, I don't know. But, again, though, so I don't want to fix that. I just want to give it to her and she can deal with it. Yeah. But the fact that the wheel was like half hanging off it, as long as it's mechanic, if it's got electrical quirks like the key and you know whatever, then that's I don't care. But as long as it's mechanically safe, the wheels aren't going to wobble off, and you know it's a good start. Right. It is now a week, maybe two later, and Steph has done some work on this so that our wheels are no longer have a massive camber on them. We've got good tyres back on because it had worn through to the cords, as we probably saw. And because I was feeling quite generous, I have given the outside a very quick basic wash, although some of the brake dust just, I feel like isn't going to come off of that sandblaster. So I've done the best I can, but I am definitely not doing anything with the interior of this car because it is disgusting. And Sophie needs to get herself out of her own mess with this, really. So um, let me break down how much it's cost. Then I'm gonna get it stuck at the farm, out of my sight, out of sight, out of mind. She can get it cleaned and sold, hopefully. And if I can, somewhere at the end of this video, I will give you her initial reaction when she sees the interior of this car because she hasn't seen it yet. And um, yeah, just try and really shame her into never doing something so silly ever again. So how much did it cost us? I've got my list. So starting out the car, uh, including all the fees, cost us £1,030.96, which seems like quite a lot for what it is. We ended up putting two rear coil springs on it because even once we'd straightened everything else out, it looked very low on the back. We thought we'd order some standard springs, offer them up and see if there was a size difference, see whether someone's lowered this bad boy before. It seems like they might have done because they were about half a coil uh, longer, the standard ones that we ordered. So we've slapped those in. And a pair of those cost us £62.06, plus the VAT. We put two tyres on it as well, because obviously where they were so cambered like that, they'd worn on the inner edges right through to the cables. A pair of those was £84, plus the VAT. We had to have one upper rear arm, which was only £34.20. You might have seen that. I think that's the one where you saw it just looked like it probably should never have gone through an MOT because the bushings were completely worn out. We had two rear lower control arms. Uh, they were £38.64, probably including the VAT because that was an eBay job for a pair. And then we spent a couple of hours doing it, so I'm rounding that up to XVAT, £268.90, making our total cost for this wonderful machine to be £1,299.86, so £1,300 quid, basically. She might get lucky with this. I mean, it is still disgusting, but... It starts, runs, drives, but it definitely needs, it's going to need some money spending on it. I think a good hundred quid just on the interior of this car, just to get it somewhat respectable to where someone's going to want to hand over maybe £2,000 for it. If she's lucky, I don't know. It's pretty disgusting. Is that actually a roll of toilet paper? Oh no, I think I said that last time. It's just a McDonald's wrapper. I should have known that. Oh yeah, I forgot about our... Uh, Stuff in the boot as well. The We Buy Gold and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, it's been a couple of weeks and I've forgotten the joys of this car already. Did we look at the spare wheel before? Because I think we've still got the original spare wheel, so it's going to need one of those. Oh, but God, look at the... Revolting. Revolting. Quite frankly, I'm not getting any more involved in it. I should never have been involved in the first place. This is cause for divorce, if I was married. But there we have it. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've enjoyed, uh, you know, watching my pain with this. Um, I haven't revoked her or changed the password on my BCA account yet. After you saw the last video where she bought three cars on my BCA account, and it was just a complete nightmare, I really should. And I got quite upset about it, but she's begged and pleaded and said, you know, she's changed her ways and it won't happen again. But I really hope it doesn't. But if it does, 
you know that you'll be seeing it on the channel. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please do get a thumbs up. It really helped me out. It helped me feel better about the fact that I've had to spend loads of time fixing this piece of crap. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm giving away a £2,000 tag for your watch as soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers. And don't forget the raffle for the 2014 Audi RS5 is still running as well. So for £5, or in fact £4.50, if you use our code TOBY10, you could have a 444 brake horsepower coupe. Who wouldn't want that? Check that out on feelgoodcompetitions.com. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. So do you think you're going to clean it yourself or you get someone in to do it? I will do it myself. Will you? Yeah. I'm amazed because it's pretty grim in there. It looks okay on the outside. Oh, God. I mean... Even someone else isn't going to clean these seats, are they? Like, to what they should be. Also, will you take it to a car wash? That thing over there looks like a... Just hop in. See <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> the back seats are probably worse than the front. Oh, God. Now, you're going to apologise to the viewers for buying such rubbish that I've got I'm to sorry. show. sorry. Everyone, my bad. But it's got a V5. It's got some service history. That's all right, then. Yeah, exactly. Even it's it got a, a little drawing. Yeah, it's got a child's drawing. Oh, is that your drawing? It's mine, of course. Looks like a, I don't know. Looks like a hash brown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes. Uh, even the. Um, yeah, it's all flaky. This is all rusty. It's all rusted. Yeah, people are going to love that, aren't they? You're going to have such an easy time selling this. It'll be fine. This is good because Some, sometimes it starts without the key in there. Sometimes oh it doesn't. You don't, you're not really meant to put it in there. That's just like this emergency. So try starting it without it in. Okay, give it here. God. That's good, isn't it? Sometimes the power steering works, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on how you start it. Foot on the brake as well? Yeah, it's on. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't like it. Well, so how did you get it to start? Well, I don't know. You, you shouldn't have bought it. You do know how to make it start. I don't, honestly I don't. Sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, that's it. Congratulations on another Wonderful purchase. It now owes me thirteen hundred pounds. I didn't mean to bid eight hundred. I meant to bid six hundred. Uh, what are we gonna watching. do? Bye bye.